Welcome back everyone to the 14.8 edition of the best solo carries where we provide you guys with three champions for every single role that hold the greatest carry power for the current meta. And remember, if you're struggling to climb in League, Skill Capped is the only place that guarantees you'll climb at least five divisions while actively using our service. Otherwise, you can claim a full refund. We do this because our service really works, and this is the best time of the season to get in on Skill Capped as we've just released tons of site exclusive courses designed for you to power learn the most important concepts for climbing in League of Legends stupidly fast compared to those who don't use skill cap. Join today for unlimited access to the world's most famously effective League of Legends guides and remember one subscription gives you access to all of our other games as well. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below to stop wasting time being hard stuck and get the rank you actually want. And with that said, let's get into it. Making his way into the top lane top three for the first time this season is going to be Set. Set has been slowly but surely creeping up in priority as of recent but he's still being slept on on relative to many other top laners. It was back in patch 14.3 to where Riot changed Stride Breaker so that Tiamat is now a component item. This was actually a massive change for Set because previously he never had a wave clear item that he could rush, which meant he didn't have the same kind of instant shoving strength as many other top laners early in the game. Now that you have this incredible shoving strength from Stride Breaker, it enables Set much more in the mid game as he can push out waves faster and either rotate for fights or knock down towers. Set's meta two item core of Stride Breaker and Hull Breaker offers the champion a ton of power in the side lane and his dueling strength on this spike is huge. There really isn't a specific top lane matchup right now that is a must ban for set, so using your ban on a meta peel champ like Janna is a pretty good idea as she can really limit what set can get done in skirmishes. There are two really good options for your rune page on set right now. The scaling rune setup consists of running conquer, however if you are in a matchup to where you're confident you can solo kill early on in lane, look to run press the attack. With Fiora nerfed last patch, the undisputed best split push top laner that you can play for solo queue is Trump. Trundle. Trundle is one of those champions to where if you acquire an early lead, it's so easy to extend that and just take over games. There's no advanced mechanics you need to learn to find success with Trundle, as the damage he's able to output with just Q and auto attacks is incredible. With the Ravenous Hydra Rush, you have so much side lane threat as the shoving power and sustain make it very difficult for enemies to match your pressure. Hydra was actually just buffed recently in 14.4, so that the active provides even more healing, and that change was huge for Trundle since he's one of the few champs that rushes the item and gets value out of that buff very early on. The core build that you should be running on Trundle is the Ravenous Hydra Rush into Trinity Force second and Hullbreaker third. As for your ban when playing Trundle, Jax is always a pretty good option as his dodge mechanic makes it more difficult to trade aggressively. Best rune page is Lethal Tempo with Triumph, Alacrity, and Last Stand, followed by Demolish and Bone Plating for secondaries. And rounding out the top lane solo carries back on the list for yet another patch is Urgot. You just can't go wrong with Urgot right now as he's relatively simple to play but very effective, especially in the lower ranks. Just by playing around Urgot's strong level 1, starting with E and looking to trade with the enemy if they walk up too close, will give you control in so many matchups. Taking those quick short trades around your E cooldown and proccing the movement speed boost from fleet footwork will have you winning nearly every single trade early in lane. Once you've whittled the enemy down enough, you can then look for openings to where you E flash on them for the kill. Once you get to the Holebreaker spike, you can really begin to exert a lot of pressure in the 1v1. Holebreaker rush into Black Cleaver 2nd and Sterex 3rd is the standard 3 item core. Olaf is a matchup that you want to try and avoid when picking Urgot as Olaf's R makes it very difficult to beat him in the side lane. The optimal rune page for Urgot consists of fleet footwork with triumph, tenacity, and last stand. Best secondaries are conditioning and overgrowth. Buffed in 14.8 and making his way back onto the solo carry list for the first time this season is Jarvan. Jarvan's percent health damage on passive is going up for this patch which helps him in so many facets as it not only increases his dueling strength but speeds up his clear as well. When it comes down to a strong early game ganking jungler, Jarvan is going to be unmatched now. A good ban for the current meta if you intend on picking Jarvan is Janna as she really nullifies a lot of Jarvan's engaged strength. The build that you'll want to be running on Jarvan revolves around a Sundered Sky Rush into Spear of Shojin second and it's situational from then on out. Conqueror is the optimal keystone rune with Triumph Alacrity and Coup de Gras while Magical Footwear and Cosmic Insight are for secondaries. One of the best pure solo carry junglers that you can play in 14.8 is Viego. Viego's priority has been on the rise for multiple patches in a row now and with Briar and Volibear both hit with nerfs as of recent, it really opens things up for Viego to stand out even more. You've got two really strong builds that you can run on Viego right now and adapt based on the game. Kraken Slayer is always the rush item, however,
However, second pickup is either Trinity Force or Sundered Sky. Into a more squishy team comp, Trinity works great, but into more bruisers or tanks, grab Sundered Sky. Third item will be Sterex if you built Sundered Sky second, while Sundered Sky will be the third pickup if you went Trinity second. Viego wants to be diving into fights, looking for opportunities for passive resets, so banning out a champ who makes that more difficult like Lulu is a good idea. Best rune page for Viego is Conqueror with Triumph Alacrity and Coup de Gras, followed by Magical Footwear and Cosmic Insight for secondaries. Diana has seen a big surge in popularity as a result of her recent buffs, and it's for good reason, as she's back to being a top tier jungler for solo queue. And if you just want a jungler that you can pick up and see solid results with pretty quickly, Diana is definitely the play right now. Where Diana really excels is getting ahead through being very consistent in her clear. All the AoE damage coming out of Diana's kit allows her to take camps super fast and lets her do grubs better than most junglers as well. You should be able to hit level 6 before the enemy jungler in most games, and that's a big window to where you should be looking to force something on the map. With Viego being so prevalent in meta right now, he's one of the better ban options for Diana. Nasher's into Lich Bane is a really great 2 item core for Diana, while Zanya's is generally the most consistent 3rd pickup. For runes, you should be taking Conqueror with Triumph, Alacrity, and Coup de Gras. Magical Footwear and Cosmic Insight are the best secondaries. Without question, one of the best mid laners that you can play for solo queue in 14.8 is Aurelian Soul. Get Soul to 2 items with a good amount of passive stacks, and there are few champions with as much teamfight impact. The consistent damage combined with the AoE crowd control and zone make Aurelian Soul such a great solo queue pick. Throwing down Aurelian Soul's ultimate in a grouped up fight is such a massive tool, as it offers so much disruption from its own CC and then from proccing Rylai's as well. Matchup wise for Aurelian Soul, it can be more difficult playing into champions with high mobility, so using your ban on Ari or Kassadin is good value. Core build you want to run on the champ consists of Rylai's into Leandries and Archangels. Comet is the best keystone rune with mana flow, transcendence, and gathering storm, followed by free boots and minion dematerializer for secondaries. Ari is going to miraculously avoid nerfs for another patch, so she's back in the top three for mid lane in 14.8. The thing about Ari right now is that you can't really punish her in lane, and once she gets to level 6, it's pretty much impossible to kill her. This means you have a pretty consistent chance each and every game to scale up into your two item core, which is incredibly powerful right now. Malignance with Lich Bane is what you should be looking to run on Ari, as it provides her with so much added burst damage. You can get such great value out of Lich Bane on Ari due to being able to proc Spellblade multiple times in fights from all the R charges you can get. There's not really a must ban mid laner you need to worry about when playing Ari, but Cassidy is a good option right now, as his high mobility and burst can be more difficult to play against. Standard rune page for Ari is Electrocute with Taste of Blood, Eyeball Collection, and Ultimate Hunter, while Mana Flow and Transcendence are the optimal secondaries. It's not often we feature one champion for two different roles on the solo carry list, but Diana is just so good for both jungle and mid right now. Buffs from a few patches back really helped push Diana over the top, but she's always been a really solid solo queue mid and a great counter to many of the melee mids in specific. You get the shield from Diana W, and you're also taking bone plating and runes, so it's extremely difficult for melee champions to win out in a straight up trade early in lane. Just playing off W and bone plating cooldowns in lane and looking to trade when they're up is a recipe for success in your melee matchups. When you're against range, it's a bit more tricky, but you generally want to let the enemy push into you while you farm with Q, and then once you hit level 3 and the wave is on your side of the lane, then you can look to go aggressive. It's difficult for us to cover all these different tactics in detail in a video like this, so our brand new course on all the mid lane essentials can really help you out. Champs with high mobility who can peel away from Diana's engage are who she's going to struggle against more, so it makes Ari a good ban choice right now. Lich Bane Rush is the staple on Diana mid, while Zanya's and Rabadon's are great second and third pickups. You've got two options for the Keystone Rune on Diana as Phase Rush and Electrocute are both very strong. Pros are really liking the Phase Rush regardless of the matchup right now, but Electrocute is still great for solo queue if you're in a melee matchup that you can look to kill early on, like Katarina, Echo, or Silas. With Jinx avoiding nerfs in 14.8, you'd think the release of Arcane is right around the corner, but it's still months away. Jinx has been the most dominant crit ADC in recent patches, as she was a cut above before the crit item buffs, and then when the item buffs went through, they took her to another level. You've got two viable build paths for Jinx right now, as the Shiv nerfs from last patch have evened out the playing field with Kraken Slayer. Kraken is going to be the higher DPS rush option, however, if you're in a game to where you are a bit behind early on and won't be able to trade aggressively, going Shiv for the stalling power is a great idea. It can be really annoying playing into champions who can easily dive you in the back line, so using your ban on Ari or Zed is good value right now due to their higher play rates. The best rune page for Jinx consists of Lethal Tempo with Presence of Mind, Bloodline, and Cutdown, followed by Absolute Focus and Gathering Storm for secondaries. One of the best ADCs that you can play for the current meta, who's still quite undervalued, is Kog'Maw. Kog has been absolutely tearing up solo queue after his recent buffs, and he's become even better due to big buffs from Sona and Nami in 14.7. There are so many enchanters back in great spots for solo queue, and especially with Janna being extremely powerful and picked a ton right now, there's a great place for Kog in meta. Some crazy 
key stat lines throughout 14.7 as Cog paired up with Lulu, Milio, Nami, or Janna was winning over 54% of the time, and that trend should continue in 14.8. Build-wise for Kog'Maw right now, there are about five items that you can pick up on the champ depending on the game. Blade Rush is a staple, however, from then on out, it's very situational. Terminus Second is great if you are into dive comps and need some added durability. Rage Blade will be your second or third pickup depending on whether or not you build Terminus in the second slot. Hurricane works great into beefier comps that have two or more tanks. Wit's End is a solid pickup into comps that have a few heavy magic damage threats. Prioritize your ban on any champion with strong dive threat if you intend on picking Kog'Maw, as Ari, Zed, or Diana are all good options right now. Lethal Tempo should be your keystone rune for every single game with Triumph, Bloodline, and Last Stand. Roll with Conditioning and Overgrowth for secondaries. One of the best ADCs when it comes down to taking matters into her own hands and solo carrying games is Neela. Recent crit item buffs have been great for Neela, and she's been excelling as a top tier pick ever since. What's so great about Neela is that you have the ability to force engages by yourself. It can be such a pain playing as ADC and your support just never goes in or tries to make a play when you have a window. Well, with Neela, once you get level 6, if you have your Flash and R available, punishing enemies, mispositioning is very easy to do. The straight up 2v2 of Neela is extremely powerful due to her ability to block so much damage with her W. If you are the one to initiate the fight and you don't get chunked out beforehand, you've got a very high chance of coming out on top of the skirmish. Supports who can nullify the engage strength of Neela are who you should prioritize your ban towards, so Braum, Janna, or Lulu are all good options for the meta. The standard 3 item core for Neela consists of the Collector Rush into Quickblade 2nd and Shield Bow or Lord Dom's 3rd. Optimal Rune Page revolves around Conqueror followed by Triumph, Bloodline, and Last Stand. Grab Sudden Impact and Treasure Hunter for secondaries. Moving on to support now, a really great solo carry selection for 14.8 is Pike. With a lot of squishy range support seeing a lot more play right now, it allows for good Pike players to really thrive in this meta. Earlier in the season, it was really hard for Pike to fit in just because Maokai was such a hard counter, but now that Maokai is pretty absent from meta, it's been great for Pike's viability. The recent nerfs to Bloodsong didn't hurt Pike at all, and he's actually got great versatility when it comes down to his support item upgrade. Bloodsong and Celestial Opposition are both very strong on Pike right now, so you can adapt very well to each game. Against comps that have a lot of burst damage. The damage reduction from Celestial Opposition works really well to nullify their strength when you're diving into fights. If you are against a comp with more consistent DPS though, and you're not worried about getting one shot, Bloodsong is the play. Umbral Glaive is always the best first core item for Pike, while Edge of Night and Ghost Blade can be interchanged second. Supports that have reliable disengaged strength are who you can run into some issues with when playing Pike, so banning out Janna is a good idea. The best rune page for Pike consists of Hail of Blades with Cheap Shot, Zombie Ward, and Relentless Hunter, followed by Bone Plating and Unflinching for secondaries. Taking home the second solo carry spot for support this patch is going to be Blitzcrank. Blitzcrank is quite strong right now for similar reasons to Pike as he loves feasting on the more squishy enchanters that have come back in meta. Landing a hook on a champ like Janna, Sona, or Nami is almost always going to be more rewarding than hitting a Maokai as bursting them out is so much easier. Melee supports and ADCs who have gap closers are who can be more difficult for Blitz to succeed against, so you can't go wrong with using your ban on Braum or Ezreal. You've got lots of options for the support item upgrade on Blitz as Solstice Slay, Celestial Opposition and Bloodsong are all viable. Against a bursty comp, Celestial is good value. When you are snowballing early on, Solstice Slay is great, and if you end up being the one who picks up all the kills early on, going Bloodsong to amplify your own damage threat is great. Trailblazer is always going to be the rush item for Blitz, and Locket is generally the best second pickup. For the rune page, you should be running Glacial Augment with Hex Flash, Biscuits, and Cosmic Insight. Nimbus Cloak and Celerity are the best secondaries. With the way the ADC meta is aligned right now, it doesn't really take much skill at all to lock in Janna and pile up the wins. Jinx being the most played ADC in meta gives Janna a ton of value right now as you just get Jinx to two items and begin taking over mid-game team fights. Often in solo queue, heavy melee dive comps will be drafted and it gives Janna so much power as she shuts down those kinds of champs super hard. Since Janna has such great peel strength, the way to beat her is by finding catch plays from range and therefore Blitzcrank is a good ban if you intend on playing Janna. For Janna's support item upgrade, Realm Spike and Dream Maker are on very equal footings now as a result of the 14.7 Realm Spike nerfs. If your ADC gets ahead early on and you're confident in their ability to carry, then going Dream Maker is the play. However, if you are the one who gets all the kills, or if you don't feel your ADC is very competent, just go Realm Spike so you have more damage yourself. Imperial Mandate should be your rush item in every single game, while Shirelia's slots in second. As for the rune page, Aerie is outperforming Comet by about 2% in solo queue right now. However, both Keystone runes are viable options on Janna. Alright guys, one last thing. Our rank up guarantee is insane. It's like signing up for the gym and getting a refund if you don't get ripped. That's how confident we are in skill cap. 
We obsess over making the best guides with top players, rigorous testing, and top tier video editing to make your climb easy. If you're ready to level up, visit skillcap.com and see the difference. So that's going to wrap everything up for the 14.8 edition of the best solo carries. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.